Hello and welcome to BBC News. I'm Lequesa Burak and voting is underway in presidential elections in Russia, which will almost certainly see Vladimir Putin extend his quarter of a century in power. The process began in Russia's Far East several hours ago. These pictures uh, came in to us from Vladivostok. And let's show you the scene live at a polling station in Moscow with people and officials there in that particular polling station. There is the potential for a runoff vote if no candidate wins more than 50% in the first round. However, with many of Mr. Putin's opponents unable to run, it does seem inevitable that Vladimir Putin will be re-elected without a need for that second ballot. The election is encompassing the territories which Russia annexed in Ukraine. In all, more than 112 million people have the right to vote. At the last election in 2018, Mr. Putin took more than three quarters of the vote. Our Russia editor, Steve Rosenberg, has more on the issues surrounding this election. These days, when Vladimir Ovchinikov paints Russia, the result is very dark. From a mountain of skulls and a dictator's ambition to this, Russia's war in Ukraine likened to Stalin's terror. The 86-year-old artist had taken his anti-war message onto the streets of Borovsk, graffitiing Stop the War. All these paintings were scrubbed out and Vladimir fined twice for discrediting the Russian army. But he continues to speak out against the invasion of Ukraine. I believe that this is a crime against the territorial integrity of a neighboring country. It's a crime. And if I keep silent about it, it's like I'm condoning it. Last month, after the death in prison of opposition leader Alexei Navalny, Vladimir went into town. On this memorial to victims of political repression, he painted Mr Navalny's face. It was quickly erased. But Vladimir has created this Navalny portrait at home. Where's Russia heading? Some say we're on our way to more repression totalitarianism and to full dictatorship. But there is another picture of Russia, one much brighter, the official version. The picture the authorities want Russians to see is not of a country that is aggressive abroad and repressive at home, but a Russia with a glorious past and a bright future, of heroes and patriots who not only love their country, but also their current president. Instead of dictatorship, it's devotion to the leader on state TV and an action man president flying high and on course for an election landslide. Mind you, Vladimir Putin faces no serious challenge. His fiercest critics are in exile or in prison or in Alexei Navalny's case, dead. It's absolutely impossible to say about our presidential election that this election is fair and free. Politician Boris Nadezhdin was barred from running in the election. He claims it was because his anti-war message was growing too popular with the public. In Russia we have uh, propaganda and we have a myth that everybody in Russia support Putin and everybody in Russia support the special military operation. It's really not the fact. And my election campaign uh, showed that a lot of people against the Putin's politics and a lot of people against the special military operation. But he's on the ballot. Although when I caught up with the communist candidate Nikolai Kharitonov, he praised Putin. Vladimir Putin, he said, is consolidating the nation for victory. And back in Borovsk, Many seem to believe that. I hope Putin wins, Lyudmila says, although we do have talented leaders who could run the country in an emergency. A Putinless Russia means an emergency. Now that is a picture the Kremlin will be more than happy to see painted. 
Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Borusk. Well, let's stay with this and speak now to Sergei Sanovich, who is an expert in disinformation and social media platforms, and also a fellow at Stanford University near San Francisco in the United States. Hello and welcome to the program. Um, just on that, that matter of whether these elections, what the point is of these elections, the Kremlin controls absolutely everything, including the elections. So what's the point of them? Well, I think in, in modern world, uh, you know, as long as it's not a monarchy or a military junta, what, what is other way to legitimize the leader? Otherwise, like, why Putin is different from Prigozhin or, or Girkin, right? He, he needs to do that. But also there, there are additional functions. First of all, it's monitoring local bureaucracy, how well they can address, you know, local social needs. You know, if you, if you have a roof leaking, it's it's better chance to get it fixed ahead of elections. Uh, and don't forget, you know, all these people working in propaganda, uh, you know, there is a rent-seeking motive too, right? The, the weekends in Dubai and Rolls Royces, they cost money. Uh, so all this money is spent from federal budget. You know, there are a lot of people uh, looking to, to get rich of them. And on propaganda and disinformation, misinformation, how much does uh, Mr. Putin rely on that aspect? I would say, I mean, it's important overall, but but sort of uh, uh, continuously. Uh, I think specifically when it comes to elections, uh, you know, winning for Putin is easy. And I'm not even talking about ballot staffing and, you know, altering the, the final score, which he does too. Uh, but the most important thing, he controls who, who runs, right? So this is usually absolutely faceless people, uh, not eager to run, usually second, third level functionaries in the sort of loyal opposition and, and when I say loyal opposition it's not like in the UK mm. it, it means that you know they, they do whatever Kremlin's uh, Kremlin tells them to do um, you know these days uh, yeah yeah just let's let's just uh, move it forward and uh, let's say that Mr Putin does in fact uh, win uh, this next term what are ordinary Russians making of the, the war in Ukraine? Has Mr. Putin at any point during campaigning brought up the likelihood of further conscriptions? And how would that sit with Russians, do you think? I think he's looking uh, desperately to avoid it. It would be very unpopular. And his approach is instead to lure people to sort of uh, join the military voluntarily and uh, you know he's paying really good money for that he proposed in the recent address to the parliament uh, to increase taxes and so this money will pay for increased uh, military production which is very important and you know these days uh, united states is slow in providing uh, support for ukraine so russia is looking to uh, take an advantage and also to pay for this, uh, uh, for these soldiers, uh, you know, to to come voluntarily because conscription, uh, mobilization rather, would be very unpopular. Indeed. Okay, Sergei Sanovich, thank you very much indeed. And uh, just to remind viewers that this is a three-day uh, election, and you can keep up to date with that right here on uh, BBC News.